On the Explain to Computers YouTube channel, I've seen Christopher cover SBCs, which are small board computers from Latte Panda. And Latte Panda recently reached out to me to see if I would be interested in taking a look at the Latte Panda IOTA. And this is an upgraded version of the Latte Panda V1 that came out, I think, in like 2015. And so this computer, SBC, is eight times faster than the original Latte Panda V1 because it's using the Intel N150. So it's using an x86 based processor. That's what makes this single board computer very interesting. It's kind of similar to the Ratsa X4 that I covered in a previous video. So the Latte Panda IOTA is actually a little bit bigger, wider, and longer than the Raspberry Pi. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a good thing, I think, because it allows them to have the freedom to put the IO connectivity and various peripherals in any way that they see fit. And it gives more room to put a lot more functionality onto the board than the Raspberry Pi has to offer and a lot of other SBCs. There is a ton of connectivity on this device. There's so many things to even consider and there's a lot of accessories they already have with it that they actually sent me a bunch of accessories which I'll go over after I talk about just the IOTA board itself because there's a lot to talk about. This is a quick rundown. It comes with the Intel N150 as I mentioned and you can get eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM with it. 64 or 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It has a TF card slot like the Raspberry Pi for micro SD cards. It has a PCIe 3.0 by one FPC connector like the Raspberry Pi for accessories. It has an M.2 E key for Wi-Fi cards so you can add Wi-Fi capabilities to it. It doesn't come built in like the Raspberry Pi, but that's kind of nice because you don't have to have Wi-Fi if you don't want need it. So you can add what, and it allows you to upgrade it to whatever you want, the Wi-Fi 7 components. So you get three USB 3.2 10 gigabit USB ports on it, which is nice because a lot of these SBCs might have only five gigabit USB 3.0 ports on it, or maybe has some 2.0 ports. It comes with a one gigabit Ethernet interface, which I kind of wish that was a 2.5 gig Ethernet interface because a modern CPU like N150 can handle that just fine. Um, but they probably wanted to save some, maybe some of the PCI lanes possibly for a lot of this other connectivity that's on the board. It has a full HDMI port on it, which I like because there's enough room on the board for it. And it's more durable than some of the you know, micro HDMI ports, you know, if you plug and unplug very frequently. Uh, so I do like that. It has an I2C touch connector and an EDP display connector so you can have touchscreen displays connected to it and they actually offer that as one of their accessories a touch panel that you can get with this which is nice uh it has a headphone jack which is great if you just want like easy connectivity to a headphones or a speaker uh it has a rtc battery connection so it has a real calm clock the battery kind of hangs off of it similar to like the rats x4 that i did in a previous video um, but you could tuck that inside of a case or something like that, depending on how you want to use this. And it has a GPIO header powered by the RP2040. A lot of these single board computers use the Raspberry Pi GPIO you know, coprocessor. So uh, it has that functionality. So you can still use GPIO type programming and that kind of thing on this board. It has its own little processor for that. It has a fan connector, so you can connect an active cooling fan on it. So this board comes with various power options, which is nice because you can use a standard USB 3.0 port uh, like you do for many SBCs, but you can also use a power management connector on the bottom of the board for a UPS. They have a battery powered UPS as an accessory, which I'll show, uh, so you can have a fully battery powered and they also have another power connector if you want to use an alternate power source that you want to plug into the SBC so they give you a lot of power option flexibility there which is really great to see one interesting thing about this SBC is in the bio settings they expose these TDP settings so you can change the maximum power usage of this SBC so you can tune it down to 6 watt TDP or up to 15 watt TDP so that you can run it at 6 watts you can run it with a passive cooling if you don't if you want it to be silent or you can crank it up to full power if you want maximum performance and you can use an active cooler with a fan to keep it cool and so that I love that they give you that flexibility because you might want to you might be okay with running it slower cuz it's still going to be a lot faster than a lot of other SBCs 
on the market. You can get this SBC with an unactivated copy of Windows 11, so you can play around with it a little bit, or you can pay extra and get a full Windows 11 license for this. So because this is x86 hardware, you can get it with Windows 11. You can run this as a full desktop system if you really want to with the added ability to have all these different accessories and you can just make this nice, neat little SBC, little mini PC essentially to do whatever types of projects you want to work on. So Latte Panda sent me a bunch of their accessories. I like that they already have a bunch of accessories ready to go from the launch of this product. And it covers a lot of the basis of what you might want to use this device for. It's not as rich and diverse, of course, as the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, but this, but the accessory they give you really give you a lot of different options on how you want to go about using this device. So there's so many options that I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it because there's so many things I want to try. I was like, maybe I'll use it as this, or maybe I'll use it as that. And there's certain accessories that you can't use together. And there's a few that you can use together. So you just have to kind of see depending on what they are, because some of the accessories will use the PCI 3.0 FPC connector. And so you can't put two devices in there. There's no splitter. You might be able to get a third party splitter to do more things, but then, you know, it's probably going to be less than ideal experience depending on how that works. And so you just have to kind of play around with and look at how the accessory is set up because some things connect on the top of the device, SBC, someone might connect to the bottom and you know, you just have to kind of play around with that. And like, I think the Wi-Fi module, you can, since it's on the board, you can use the Wi-Fi module with some of the other accessories because it doesn't use that PCIe slot. So uh, there's a little bit of experimentation to do there. I tried a few different things myself and I couldn't do a couple of different combinations that I was hoping I could do. Um, but there's still a lot of flexibility to do a very cool, interesting things with this project. So I'm going to go through and show each of the accessories up close so you can see what they look like and kind of describe a few things about each thing. So the two accessories that I didn't get from Latte Panda that I bought separately was the heat sink because they did send me the passive cooler but I, I, I bought the heat sink so in case I want to actually run it fully silent. But then I also bought the mini PC case for it. So it looks exactly like a mini PC uh, passively cooled. I might use it for Wi-Fi 7 testing. I think that's what I might use this for because that way I don't have to use a full desktop for that. And I can have a portable one I can use for that type of thing. And I'll show what that setup looks like in this video. Here's the IOTA board with the CMOS battery where you can see you can attach it to the white connector on the SBC. This is the UPS hat, which allows you to run off battery power if your main power source goes offline, just like a normal UPS. So this gives you a nice little battery backup solution. And that was the top and bottom of the hat that was shown. And you can see what it looks like when it's attached to the IOTA. It attaches to the top of it and it connects with this cable between the two uh, boards which gives you the power management capabilities and you can still have the fan on the bottom to keep your iota cool note that the ups hat does not come with the batteries you have to purchase those separately here's an up close view of the dip switches you can set for these different options for auto booting safe off and if you want to do 80 percent charge instead of 100 percent charge to extend your battery life in Windows 11, you can click on the battery icon in the system tray, and you can see the battery percentage, just like you would for a laptop computer that has a battery. So that's what the UPS functionality gets you, which is really neat if you want that kind of battery backup for your system. This is the M.2 hat, which allows you to add an NVMe storage to the IOTA. And this is what it looks like when you attach it to the top of the IOTA. It only takes up the right-hand side or left-hand side, depending on which way you're looking at it, of the board. And it's connected with the PCIe 3.0 by 1 connector, so you can't use any other hats that use that PCIe connector. You can see here in Windows 11 that the NVMe storage is recognized, and you can click on the properties and see more information about it. So if you need that faster storage, higher storage capacities, you can use the NVMe hat. If you wish to power your IOTA with PoE, you can get the PoE hat, and it has the added benefit of giving you an extra 1 gigabit Ethernet interface. This is the 4G LTE hat, and it allows you to connect to various 4G cellular networks. This is the IOTA Active Cooler, which allows you to, to run the IOTA at its maximum speed and have adequate cooling at the same time. So you want to do this if you want to use maximum performance of the IOTA. Conversely, this is the heatsink you can get for it that I purchased separately that if you can want to run a passive cooling, then you can do this at a lower TDP. This is a passively cooled mini PC case that you can get for the IOTA, which is really nice if you want to make this like a little tiny mini PC that you can play around with. 
and I bought this one separately as well because they didn't send it to me. And if you take it apart, you'll see there's a heat sink in there and there's some screw holes that you can mount for this motherboard. And you could take out some of those little standoffs and depending on how you want to mount these various things in there, uh, especially this is how you do it if you want to do an M.2 configuration. Uh, the only bad part about doing an M.2 configuration, as I found out, is you can't do Wi-Fi with it with this case because the, it blocks the corner of where that Wi-Fi antenna would stick out. So that's unfortunate. So I took out the M.2 slot and you can see what it looks like if you want to do a Wi-Fi configuration. I put a Wi-Fi 7 card in here and I put the two antenna standoffs on the back side and it works just fine. The Wi-Fi 7 module has no problems being recognized out of the box with Windows 11 as you can see right here with this information in the Wi-Fi settings. And you just uh, can close the lid on it and it looks like this when everything is all closed up. It looks like a nice neat little mini PC with some Wi-Fi capabilities. And I'll show a speed test of a Wi-Fi 7 adapter. It looks like you can get full throughput of Wi-Fi 7 which is great which is nearly you know two to two and a half gigabits of throughput. As I mentioned earlier, the TDP can be configured in the advanced settings in the BIOS and it's by default, it's configured for the 15 watt TDP, which is for maximum performance. And that's where the power limit one and power limit two settings are for. And as you can see, the power limit one is set to 10 watts, which is below the 15 watt TDP, which allows the CPU to ramp down a little bit more. So it can be a little bit more power efficient, even at its maximum performance. If you wish to passively cool the IOTA, you could set the power limit 1 to 6 watts. It's not really recommended to set it much below that because then performance is decreased significantly more. And then you can set the power limit 2 to be a little bit higher so that you can ramp up when you need to be. Running at 15 watt TDP, you can see with the passive cooling, I'm getting 72 degrees Celsius. So you probably want to use the active cooler because it's getting a little bit hot. But the performance is 5527, which is what you'd expect for an N150, even when you compare it to the Passmark website. If you set the IOTA to a 6 watt TDP, you can see it significantly reduces performance. But it does help a lot with temperatures, with the max being 56 degrees Celsius, which is definitely a safe, comfortable temperature for a fanless mini PC. Here's a quick performance test of the Wi-Fi 7 module. As you can see, you can get full Wi-Fi 7 performance on the IOTA, which is interesting because this is actually faster than the one gigabit Ethernet interface that's on board because it didn't come with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interface. So full disclosure, Latte Panda sent me the IOTA and all the accessories except for two of the accessories that I mentioned earlier in this video. And I appreciate that they sent this to me to try this out because this is a very interesting product. It's very cool if you, you like to tinker and explore with various things and you don't want to necessarily go with the ARM ecosystem because you want to have more flexibility in the type of software you run with it. Then you can run Windows or whatever. If you're comfortable doing that instead of Linux, you have that ability and flexibility to run full-blown Windows on this machine and still have it perform well. Uh, I really love playing around with hardware like this and other hardware. So until next time, I'm Dustin Casto and I hope you guys have a great day.